Hello and welcome to You Belong on the Boards, a podcast designed to inspire and encourage young women into business. My name is Catherine and I'm the founder of GLOW, which stands for Growing Leaders with Opportunities and Willpower. And I'm also a student at the University of Sussex, where I'm currently on my placement year with SAP. And my name is Helen. I'm a woman. I'm a graduate. I'm a mum. And I've spent the last 30 years working in business. My current role is Managing Director of Aviatrix, a market research business. I am so excited to be here and start this podcast with Catherine where we hope to inspire women to move into business where they can create a world of possibilities by doing. But before we go there, why are we doing this? Well, there's some pretty drastic statistics, which is in 2017, only 5.6% of UK women ran their own businesses compared to 15% of women in Canada. And, but the real thing is there's 250 billion of new value could be added to the UK economy if women started and scaled new businesses at the same rate as men. That's like a lot. A lot. A lot. So now we have our cups of coffee. Let's get the show on the road. So today we are focusing on technology in the workplace. To open our discussion, we have our guest speaker, Petros. Hi. I am Dr. Petrus Konakiotis and I'm an Associate Professor of Management at the SAP Europe Business School in Madrid, Spain. There is no doubt that uh, technology is changing and it is changing rapidly. We see that um, there's a lot of discussion about artificial intelligence and the generation of new professions and new types of employment, for example, gig work or uh, micro work which, which is conducted primarily via the internet. Uh, at the same time, we see that existing professions and popular types of employment today may become moot or even obsolete over time. Now, the new generation, the younger generation, is uh, has grown up with uh, technology, so the relationship with technology is significantly different from the relationship uh, with technology that the current working uh, populations have. However, in order not only to survive but also to succeed, one will have to show a certain degree of adaptability to the new constantly changing working environment. Technology has always impacted the way we work. It has done so by uh, creating new working environments and new work configurations, while also uh, bringing along uh, unprecedented challenges. A good example is that of virtual teams. Virtual teams are different from traditional teams because they involve individuals from different locations who are brought together via technology to work on a specific task or project. Virtual teams are unique in that they have overcome traditional boundaries such as geographical boundaries. You may have people working together from different uh, countries or even continents. Organizational boundaries by having people working together from different organizations, different parent organizations. And also uh, temporal boundaries because of the fact that certain individuals may work uh, on the same team from a different time zone. Now, these teams, uh, they offer benefits that were unimaginable years ago, such as that of uh, flexibility or of uh, access to different types of talents that are not available locally, but they also introduce unprecedented challenges. A good example is that of leadership. So how does a leader ensure that their members are feeling well, that they're performing well, and they're, they're not feeling isolated uh, from their different locations? Or how does one communicate their creativity when they know that they won't be able to see their coworkers um, face to face and they have to communicate their creative ideas over Skype or some other type of technology? So what this uh, example shows 
is that technology is impacting the workplace and that we need to be aware of both the benefits and the challenges that uh, this may introduce and we may also have to develop new management styles because older management styles may not necessarily lend, lend themselves to these new types of uh, working environments. Thank you for the introduction, Patros. So, Helen, technology, what's your thoughts? Well, over the last 30 years, uh, I've probably lived through most changes uh, in terms of technology, probably not as many as you will. <laughs> but, uh, so when I started, I did have a computer on my desk, but I used it maybe twice a week. We had uh, secretaries that did did all the documents and all that mm. kind of stuff. But so I've lived through telexes, faxes, mm. oh uh, intranets, mobile phones, internet, mm. Wi-Fi. So, and it's tough. It's really tough to keep up with those changes. Mm. I find it difficult, I will admit. I think it's, it's, it's good because as Patros meant and said, us as a younger generation, we're just so adapt to it because we constantly have grown up with basically being surgically attached to you know devices, especially my phone. I, I got my first phone when I was 11. Yeah. So, and ever since then, it's just been natural. I guess, absolutely, absolutely. Me. And I think that he made the point about, uh, Petros made the point about uh, being separate, technology being separate. And I have to say, it still feels a little bit like that for me. Mm. It's not a fifth limb like it is for your generation. It, yeah. is, it is a little bit separate for me and uh, it is a challenge. Mm. But then I suppose the new um, wave of technology that you're going to experience may make you feel the same in a different way. But it is, it is, it is a challenge. Mm. But how do you find that you use a lot of this technology? So like Skype and that VPT area? Yeah, I mean, Skype is, I think, is amazing. Mm. Um, but the thing I get so confused about is, presumably, because phones were, for my generation, something that was enormous. That's how you, you know, phoning your friends as soon as you'd said goodbye after school was, was you know, using the phone was just enormous. Mm. So the thing with Skype is I naturally assumed it was all about being face to face. It was, mm. a, it was kind of a replacement for being face to face with yeah. somebody. But what I find so confusing is that people don't switch on their cameras. Yeah. And uh, I find I did find that hard at first switching on your camera because instead of you know I spend two or three minutes a day looking at my face and that's quite enough thank you. <laughs> uh, everybody else has to suffer it, but I don't. But I suppose with these uh, VPT technologies, it's really um, hard to have to look at yourself, mm -hmm. which I know may be a small uh, minor point, but I think it's. I can only see that as the reason why people don't use, use it to its full advantage, mm. which is being able to connect. I mean, taking it from my generation and how I use it at work mm. and again in my meetings, so my whole business, Glow, is actually run on VPT technology. Mm. We've got members in Sweden, we've got members in Cardiff, we're spread everywhere. But it's usually because I find myself multitasking. So I'll be listening to a call and say if I won't be presenting for another half an hour, yes, I'm paying attention, I'm concentrating. But I'm also prepping for a meeting that's straight after that I need to have a presentation ready for. And mm. then for some cases, people find it quite distracting to have, you know, somebody's face moving, like that you don't pay attention to what they're saying. So I've been in calls with up to 70 people being on there. And if all 70 people had their faces on there, where would you look? What would you listen mm. to? You know, because if somebody's got somebody doing something in the background, you're obviously going to focus on that. But yeah, yeah. I just, I, that's how I feel. I, you see, and I would argue that mm. um, the opportunity to connect mm. with another human being is really, especially in today's day and age, yeah. like gold dust. And actually through connection, mm. we so many opportunities spin off that. I mean, mm. this, that's why we're sitting here now, yeah. <laughs> is through a connection that we made, we then come up with an idea. Mm. And that's how creativity works. And I think that whilst technology is amazing, and my goodness, look at all the things that we're able to do as a result of it, is we mustn't forget the importance of human connection. Mm. And it's easy to not appreciate how much we need it 
We need it. It's fundamental. It's as fundamental as water. It's as fundamental as sleep. For a human mm. being, we need that human connection. And I loved what Petros said and really making that quite a big part of the complexities of technology. Mm. And really, I think that that's your biggest challenge mm. in the years ahead is how you're going to make that create that balance yeah. because it does cause isolation and mental health issues, as Absolutely. we know. Absolutely. So it's so important that it's used to its advantage rather than it uses us. Yeah, I think that's what makes it so important, especially for big businesses that are global around the world, is to have those sort of social events where you can bring people together. So I'm yeah. currently organising an event in Amsterdam for 80 people who are all in my team that are spread across the Mere North. And this is the first time some of them have ever seen these colleagues. This is an opportunity for them, yes, to get together and learn best practice, but it's also an opportunity for them to talk, to socialise. Mm. I mean, we had the other week at the end of quarter end a big, you know, barbecue mm. in the office mm. just so it gave people the opportunity to get away from their desk and actually socialise with each other. So, yeah, we're all animals and we crave that attention, but we don't, uh, or the connection with people, but we don't realise it. It's like it's a hunger that we have inside mm -hmm. us and we don't realise it's about that connection. Yeah. And uh, we suffer as a consequence mm -hmm. of not doing it. And I think that that's something that we really must guard against. In, and mm -hmm. so these social events are really important. I was at a presentation a couple of nights ago with um, a guy talking about how just in, in a call centre, mm -hmm. in coffee breaks, instead of uh, allowing people to go off separately to uh, where they would just check their phone, as mm. we all do, they were actually uh, grouping people together so mm -hmm. that they could interact, yeah. and that increased productivity by 23%. Crikey. <laughs> and obviously, more importantly, really, the mm. well-being and, and uh, mental health of the people there mm. also improved, joy improved, yeah. really those essential um, things in a workplace. So Absolutely. I think it's really, really important. Absolutely. So I think that's, that's the pinnacle point for women to go into business is that they need to address this. They need yes. to understand the sort of implications of the technology. Yes, it's absolutely amazing. I use it every single day. So for GLOW, as I mentioned earlier, we've got someone in Sweden, we've got someone in Cardiff. I wouldn't be able to run GLOW if it wasn't for the VPT technology that's in place. And for, for me to do that as a leader, I just, like Petros mentioned, we need to make sure that we're maintaining that sort of mental health aspect. So I'm constantly checking in with my team, making sure, hey, how are you doing? Is everything okay? I try to make at least 10 minutes of every call. Mm. What's everybody doing? Has somebody had some call over the weekend? Just to bring that social element there, because we don't always get that time to meet. We don't always get that time to build those connections. And you're right, it's so important. Well, and the other thing to that is, I mm. suppose it's time. We're so prime, time precious, like you mm. say, you know, you're multitasking. So, mm. oh, this is a good opportunity. If it's a Skype call or whatever it might be, or yeah. Zoom or any other VPT technology is, oh, okay, so I can do something at the same time. But actually, my colleague and I, we, we work in two different offices, mm. um, two hours apart, mm. but we actually, I, we, often we don't want to do it, we don't see the need to come together because we, our workload is at such, yeah. but actually we make that time because mm. we know how much better we're going to work together mm. and more importantly how much better the business is. Yeah, but with that I think one of the main problems with what technology mm. is at the moment is that there's so much, oh. there's so much technology out there. Tell me about like, it. <laughs> don't, get, <laughs> don't get me wrong, there's some really cool stuff out there. Like, there's a application called Canva that I, I use religiously. So it's actually started up by a female entrepreneur and it's a unicorn company that's worth over a billion dollars, which is incredible, absolutely incredible. And all it is, is it's a platform that allows you to design social media posts. It allows you Brilliant. to design logos. I mean, I got the idea for our logo from Canva, but yeah, it's, it's just so cool. But where do, where do you get the line? Where do you say, this is the best thing, let's use that, or does something else come along and you're like, oh, let's use that? How do you filter that pool, I guess? No, th th this is the problem for me. Mm. Uh, I have an instant uh, feeling that the 
a piece of software isn't going to work uh, because of um, ES being a bit of a Luddite. Um, <laughs> but also it's kind of which one is the best? You know, there, there are so many things doing exactly the same thing. We talked about project management software. Yeah. I mean, I know of at least three or four in any, in any meeting I'm in with other MDs of companies, all of them use a different one. How do you know which one it is? It's so overwhelming. Mm. And I can't help thinking there's an enormous opportunity for a woman mm. uh, to, or for, for anybody for that matter, to come in and have a look at, you know, how can we kind of take all this and make the best one mm. or kind of, you know, sl slim it down a bit, make it easier for people because it is all about user experience. Yeah. Uh, and embracing all the different aspects of these different softwares, I often wonder how much, you know, what would it be like to fully use my mobile phone? I think that's just where, this is where the opportunity really comes for Generation X and even hmm. just to ask for help. Exactly. You, what you need to do, like we're constantly told at school that if you don't know something, then you need to ask for help. You need to ask your teachers, you need to ask your manager. I think that's got to go the other way around. You guys have got to come to us and say, look, I don't understand. I don't know what the best tech is to use. Mm. Can you help me? Mm. Can you sort this out? Can you trial this for me? Like nearly every app that I've ever used mm. has got a free trial. Like just say, do you mind looking at these and weighing up what's the best option? Because I think that's where we're most useful. Because as Petra said, we are so inclined towards technology because we've just grown up with it. So mm. for us to use it, it'll be a lot easier. And then we'll be able to explain it to you in a way that we think you understand it, I guess, in a way. I couldn't agree more, and, and it's always in uh, uh, when you're in a situation where you don't think you know about it, you feel insecure, and it's at those, those moments that you're mm. less likely to ask, yeah. and I have to put myself in that camp. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, and we, we've, you know, and I've also heard women who've come back into the workplace after they've had a mm. baby or something and realise, oh my goodness, you know, things have moved on so much. I can't join the workforce, but you have to mm -hmm. embrace it. You have to do your bit and don't be afraid of it. And as you say, ask for help. My, for help. just from the, our conversations and listening to Petros, I've realized how I really have to address this fear that yeah. I have of technology. Yeah. I have to embrace it. Yeah, you've just, you've got to utilize what skills that each individual has. And like we say, that is the opportunity for young women to just Im go into this and like learn MS Office, learn things like Canva, learn Photoshop, and just literally embrace it, absolutely embrace it, and totally. learn it like English, like maths, because yeah. it's gonna become so important. But I think Petros has got some more opportunities that he'd like to give us. So we'll cut over to Petros. It is important that young women seeking employment identify the right opportunities for them. I would say, first of all, look at the bigger picture. Don't be limited by what you may hear or um, you may have thought um, as a possible employment opportunity in the past. Look at the bigger picture and identify what works best for you and what you feel is best for you. Therefore, it is important that you be open uh, to whatever new opportunities might emerge due to technological developments that are uh, happening. Speaking of technology, finally, I, I want to highlight that an awareness of technology and the possibilities that it affords and also the challenges that it introduces is important no matter what decision um, is made about employment. Technology is nowadays embedded in most professions and it is not seen as a separate function as it was the case 10 or 15 or 20 years ago. Thanks for that, Petros. That's actually really quite insightful. And um, yeah, women, you just need to take these opportunities. But that's a close for us. and. I think we've had a great discussion. No, I do. And Survive versus succeed. Absolutely. And just take the opportunities by the horns. Anyway, leave some comments below or comment on the podcast. Send us some messages. Let us know what you think. And as always, thanks to Sonar TV for filming and we'll catch you later.
Thank you for watching our podcast. Just to let you know, we have an event on the 12th of December 2019 in Brighton at the Brighthelm Centre at 6pm. This will be a panel event where you guys can come and meet us and also our guest speakers to hear more about what we were talking about and the opportunities that we have on.